I mean, I find it pretty startling that this is a woman who became president of perhaps the most elite university in America. And she's, she published no books. She published 11 articles in her career. And it's turned out that uh, much of them were just plagiarized, stolen from other people. So how did she even get there in the first place? She has 50 allegations of plagiarism against her. Douglas, my grandmother would not trust Claudine Gay to herd her goats. She, <laughs> this woman could not be the president of Harvard. I don't understand how this happened. And yet I do. And people like me, you know, Helen Plackrose, James mm. Lindsay, um, there were so many of us early on who saw this years and years ago and who kept on saying, this thing is rotten. It's not going to go away. We were told so many times, oh, it's universities, you know, radical ideas emerge in universities, but over time they disappear. Mm. No, the rot is deep. But and this woman me, um... is one small representative of it. She's gone. And my big worry, Douglas, now is that they're going to say, okay, this woman is gone, the one at Penn uh, University is gone, and, you know, we're going to have a new president, we're going to maybe have a new board and move on. And I think that would be such a squandering of opportunity for real reform. Let me give you another couple of reactions uh, to her resignation uh, this week. Ibram X. Kendi, the author of a book called How to Be an Anti-Racist, which I, I think the wrong title for it. You should just take anti out. Um, Ibram X. Kendi said that in the wake of Claudine Gay's resignation, uh, racist mobs won't stop until they topple all black people from positions of power and influence. And uh, Ida Bay Wells, Nicole Hannah-Jones, uh, one of the authors of the 1619 Project for the New York Times, said after the resignation, academic freedom is under attack, racial justice programs are under attack, Black women will be made to pay. I mean, there are still people clinging on to this, aren't there, Ayan? This sort of, um, somebody must be defended simply on the colour of their skin and all the claims of plagiarism which would get any student chucked out and all the inability to condemn racism which would normally lead to condemnation, all that sort of brushed to one side because what really matters is just the colour of somebody's skin to these people. Abraham X. Kendi is a racist. He is a certified racist. Everything, all the work he has done, all his actions are about promoting racism. And so this man is being outed. What he stands for is being exposed. And I think what's happening now is because of his exposure, the kind of, um, they have this magical, um, I'm looking for the word, the spell that they've been putting on people. Mm -hmm. Just by calling them places, they would get what they want out of them. They would get the positions, the stager, the money. I think all of that's going to disappear. So they are now coming out in panic and saying, oh my goodness, everybody is a racist. Black people will be, no black people will benefit from this. Mm -hmm. Finally, those individuals who are black, who have worked hard for their degrees and the positions they have and their businesses, those people are going to shine. And these like mafia, mediocre mafia people, they're going to be exposed and hopefully be taken to where they belong, which is the dustbin of history. Now, I um, couldn't agree more, but Ayan, just tell me, I mean, it's, 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 it's so much wider this for the whole of society, isn't it? Because, I mean, once, once these ideas of, you know, prioritising people because of their race or their sex or their sexuality, once those things are pushed to the forefront, then all the issues of merit get inevitably just pushed to the back. And that just has a trickle-down effect on every aspect of society, every job, every recruitment process. You're a, uh, if I can say so, I mean, you're an amazing example of merit uh, in your own life. Uh, you escaped a forced marriage, went to the Netherlands, learned Dutch, which isn't easy, became a member of the Dutch parliament and uh, built a career for yourself in Europe and then America. Um, why is it, though, that this, this sort of merit-based uh, uh, system, why do you think it's become so unpopular? Because surely, as you say, it's, 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 it's the best chance anyone has. It's not unpopular, but this is a very loud minority that want to get up ahead only for themselves. And then they're claiming they speak for all blacks, for all women, for all, uh, you know, gender identity minorities. They don't speak for any of these minorities. They do this so that they can get ahead. Ibrahim Xkendi speaks for himself. Claudine Gay speaks for herself. She doesn't speak for me. I think it's very important, Douglas, to note that there are disparities in our societies. There are large groups of people who are left behind. And it's extremely important to tackle that. Mm. And the way to do it and the way to lift up the people 
who are left behind is to make them a part of the values that make us come ahead, the values of hard work, the values of community, the values of commitment, of responsibility, of getting up in the morning, of lifting yourself up by your bootstraps. That I think is what for me, America is all about. And we can do that without degrading the standards of what has lifted up everyone out of poverty. Mm. And yes. this is what these people are doing. And I think it's time that they're exposed and called out. And it's and this is just the beginning. Let's get down to where the hot is. I couldn't agree more. But finally, let me just ask you. I mean, this seems to have come about because of an idea that everything's a zero-sum game. You know, if, if for instance, if, if women are going to be advanced in society, men have to be punished. You know, if, yeah. if there's going to be more visibility of gay people, you've got to punish straight people and degrade straight people. And uh, that if, if you're going to make more opportunities, or not even more opportunities, just put people in positions of, of more prominence in American society or British society, you've got to sort of beat up on white people a bit. And all the studies have shown in recent years, in America and in Britain, there was one again just a couple of years ago, that this means, among other things, that you have the left behind of white men, young white men who nobody's speaking up for. Absolutely. You hear that all the time. You don't want black men to um, move ahead and leave white young men behind. You want everyone to advance. And I think in order to do this, we have to be really honest about the frameworks that we have, the framework of equal opportunity, not equity as they call it, which is the E in the DEI, which is about equal outcomes. And we know where equal outcomes, we know where hardcore socialism and hardcore communism, we know where they lead. They lead to more disparity, more division, and they lead to the gulags. And that's what these people are all about. And I think it is, I'm just really grateful that the conversation has now begun and that we can A, address disparities and uh, fight racism, fight misogyny, um, stand up for people with gender dysphoria uh, and not have their suffering used against them so that people like these uh, crazy transgender activists can get ahead. Um, and I think, Douglas, I mean, happy new year. I think we are starting the new year off on a good, on a good <laughs> in a good place. <laughs> well, I agree, but uh, who'd have thought that Harvard was the place which uh, DEI went to die?